through Big 3 Season 2, and this is what we know so far. Last year means nothing. The rings, the crown, the undefeated championship, it means nothing. It's a nice memory. You know what matters? What you've done this year. And this year, Trilogy is struggling. The defending champs fall to one and four. Meta World Peace still has that Ron Artest grit. And Gary Payton is still the best trash talker in all of sports history. That's what you gonna be! My chili! Want to add that up? When I look in their eyes up close, they are still the exact same guys. Three's company has the talent to win it all, but they need a healthy Baron Davis to have a chance. Power has the guy leading the league in scoring and assist, and the bigs play with anyone. Tri-State has the talent, lots of guys I like, but the guy I really like is that guy they call the Hawk. Which brings me to the three-headed monsters who are 5-0 and and have won close game after close game after close game. They lost their MVP to injury and replaced him with a guy who also looks like an MVP. Making this all an extremely close four-team race at the top of the big three here in Toronto. It's game time. Let's go. And we are ready to go as we check out the big three standing season two three-headed monsters for the victory earlier tonight. Now it's 6-0. The Ball Hogs drop to 1-5. and five. The two teams up next. Power at 4-1 and one can clinch a playoff berth with a win, taking on the 2-3 and three killer threes from Scotiabank Arena. In Toronto, the big three comes to you from north of the border. Kenny Albert, Jimmy Jackson, Mike Rappaport, and Carissa Thompson on hand. A look at the co-captain of the Killer Threes, Meta World Peace, joined by Mike James and Alvin Anderson as the starting lineup for head coach Charles Oakley, Corey McGetty, Catino Mobley, and big baby Glenn Davis for the power coached by the Hall of Famer, Nancy Lieberman. Power in white. Killer threes in the black jerseys. First team to 50 wins the game. Halftime when one team hits 25. Here's Spaghetti. You were talking about him just a moment ago, Jimmy. But, but the execution, the play was a misdirection play. Quick pick and roll. To get the defense to, sh to shift over, now you hit a Corey Maggetti who was able to catch the ball on the run and now get to the basket and finish. And I love this power team. They have great depth. They can beat you from inside and out. They have post presence. Let's see if the killer threes. Here's Better World Peace. She had it knocked away by Katina Mobley. Five seconds, let's go. Send the pick. The head coach, the Hall of Famer. Don't switch it. Don't switch it. Box out, box out. There you go. Josh Let's Powell go. ties the game at two. Yeah, we saw the, now. Let's go. You know, a quick shot of help, the coach, Nancy right. Lieberman, the calming presence right. of this power team, and that's why they're able to execute, especially late down the stretch of games. It's all because of her demeanor. Mobley with the put back. Yeah, don't switch it. Don't switch it. Come over the top. We're over the top. What's her message, Jimmy? No, well, she doesn't Bobby. want she doesn't want to switch the pick Don't and roll. She wants it. guys to go over the top and not put them in a situation where they have a mismatch, especially in, in the post. And it'd be interesting to see from the killer three as you see the shot clock going down. Yes. Yes. Big baby. Yes. Uh, that's a big load down there, but to finish my thought, Stephen Jackson is not here. He's the heart and soul of this Killer 3 team. Scoring, defense, emotion, Don't not playing. So who kind of Give fills that void? Is it one player or the combination of two or three? Right, that can make up for his absence. And then Big Baby on the post. Josh Powell's really not too much you could do about that, my He's man. The man. Big baby that time. Just a half a second slow getting there to take the charge, but how about 
had lateral movement that time to get over there. Six two go, go lead for go, power. Go, go. Here's McKinney, rebounded by Metal World Peace. Driving on Cachino Bowling. What? You didn't take it back. What? You didn't take it back. You didn't take it back. You didn't take it back. Don't say nothing. You didn't take it back. Charles Oakley, head coach of the Killer Threes. Yeah, and on that possession right there, Meta didn't clear the three-point line all the way. Hence, the ball was turned over, so and that's what Oak was telling him. Oakley in and out from three, rebounded by Allen Anderson. Anderson puts up the three. Steven Jackson scores 22 points in a victory for the Killer Threes last week. Here's Quentin Davis. Nice touch. He beat me with his second field goal. Do it. Just do it. Eight two lead for Nancy Lieberman and the power. Screen set by Powell for Anderson. Anderson over Davis. Yeah, but see, and that's a prime example now with Nancy hey, telling her team not to switch. So now you have Big Baby that has to Run, guard Allen Anderson on the perimeter, which is in his favor. She'd rather keep a guard on the guard. Come on, let's go. Here's Catino Mobley from three. Hey. Davis hey. was fouled underneath. Substitutions. Quentin Richardson checks in for power, placing Corey McGetty. Josh Powell will sit down. I thought Quentin Richardson last week was a key contributor right here, knocking down shots. This one got blocked. But in the game last week, 10.5 rebounds. Hit some big shots the for this power team. Okay, Ryan Hollins in the game for killer threes. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Two point lead for power. They catch a playoff spot with a win tonight. Here's Davis working inside on Hollins, and he does not get the roll. Hollins with the rebound. Yeah, great defense that time by Ryan Hollins. By staying down, he forced Big Baby. Try to shoot over the top and wasn't able to finish. Anderson from three. Battle for the rebound. Hollins has it. The putback is no good. Rebounded by Quentin Richardson. Big Baby lost the handle. Hollins slams it home. Yeah, but how about the recognition that time by Allen Anderson? Knowing that you didn't have to clear it, able to hit Ryan Hollins right underneath for an easy two. So that's six straight points, Jimmy, for the killer threes. They have tied the game at eight. Kick basketball. Again, the presence of mind. Turnover, quick pass, easy basket. Birdman, Chris Anderson has checked in for power. Replacing Gwen Davis. This is Birdman, Chris Anderson, short. And now the killer three is with the opportunity to take the lead. Come on, Ron, Ron, come on! Anderson driving, dishing off. Give me a timeout. Timeout. Charles time Oakley wants time a timeout. Timeout, let's go. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, come on. Power got out to the early lead. Killer threes have worked their way back. Power can clinch a playoff berth with a victory tonight here in Toronto. Big Three on FS1 is sponsored by Mile 22, starring Mark Wahlberg in theaters August 17th. Tied at eight in Toronto. Power and killer threes to Mike Rappaport. All right, I'm here with Corey. Corey McGetty is leading the league in scoring and assists. If you guys win this game, you, clean, you clinch a playoff berth. How does that make you feel so far? Well, it feels good that everyone has been working extremely hard, and it starts with our coach, Nancy, has been doing a great job of preparing us. 
but all our players have character. They want to win. Uh, they come with the right attitude, and that's what it's about. And what do you think about this game so far? These guys obviously don't have their captain, Steven Jackson. What do you guys need to do to pull off the win, Corey? Well, you know when you have a wounded dog, you, if you bag him up in the corner, he's still going to fight. So, again, this team is going to fight. They got a lot of good players in their team, and we still have to respect them as athletes on the floor. All right, well, congratulations on a good season. Good luck tonight. Guys? All right, thanks, Mike. Corey McKenna averaging over 19 points per game this season in the big three. Quinn Richardson taps it in to the power, back up by two. I think it's important to understand, too, yeah, we got ultra-talented guys on the court. Former NBA player, long career. See a block shot by Quentin, making his presence felt with another layup. So the thought process is that they're going to get out here and just play. But that's why the coaching is so important, to put you in position offensively and defensively to be successful. Even though they, a lot of these guys had storied career, the coach is as big of a part of the success of winning as the players on the floor. How can he come up under me like Corey McGetty mentioned the coaching of Nancy Lieberman, and Jimmy, it was very impressive watching Nancy coaching up her team at practice yesterday here in Toronto. Well, it's the, the subtle things, okay? How do you communicate with a player? Each player, each team is a little bit different, but her approach is we're gonna talk about things, understand the philosophy of what we want to do, and then go out and execute. Birdman with his first bucket. See, this is why this entire team is so tough. Big baby goes out. See a pick right here, offensive foul. But Chris Anderson gives you a different kind of post player. Okay, he's going to be a finisher, a rim runner, rebound. He's going to play defense on the pick and roll. That's why this power team, I think, is probably one of the most balanced teams that we have in the league. They scored six straight points following the timeout. Here's Birdman. Hollins made contact. Ryan Hollins commits the personal yeah, foul. Yeah, but Chris. <laughs> Anderson is laughing a little bit on that pass. Kind of lost his footing because if he didn't lose his footing, he would have been to the basket and scored. He can't hurt you out here. 14 8 lead for power. Halftime when the first team hits 25 points. 50 wins the game, must win by two. It's Hollins rejected by the Birdman. There it is, making his presence felt. Clinton Richardson. Unable to hit from three. Metal World Peace brings it back out. He puts up a three short. And Nancy wants Catino is imploring his guys to go to the hole because now you can get in the penalty if you pick up a foul. Corey McGetty, nice touch. And I think it's important that you understand when you're close enough to get to the penalty. Now put the onus on the defense to guard you off the dribble. Metal World Peace, off balance. Well, Mike Chatter with Corey McGetty, 97 points over the first five weeks to lead the big three. Carlos Boozer and Reggie Evans tied for the league lead in rebounding. McGetty atop the assist leaderboard, and Al Harrington leading the league in steals. Well, I think it says a lot about his dedication, one to come back and be healthy. As you get older, you don't heal the same, especially with an injury injury like Corey had last year but to be able to come back and not only play at a high level but lead the league in points and also assist speaks volumes to the type of player that he is in the average you know average 20 plus points three times during his NBA career played an over 800 games scored a big three record 34 points three weeks ago Here's Quinn Richardson, tapped in by Chris Anderson. And you gotta find Chris Anderson because he may be out on the perimeter, but you gotta put a body on him because if you don't, we saw this through his career in, in the NBA. He's so good at hunting down loose balls, keeping possessions alive, but you gotta put a body on him. Watch him just come through here. He got right inside of Ryan Evans, and that was an easy tip. That's 10 straight points for power coming out of the timeout. Remember, it was 8-8 at the time. Well, again, making the adjustments on the bench. And again, the team responds to Coach Lieberman. Anderson 
Strips Hollins. Stay down. Are you down? Stay down. Stay down. Are you down? A look from Ref Cam. Here in Toronto. Richardson from three. All right, let's go. Right in the rear. And now Big Baby checks back in for power replacing Birdman Chris Anderson. There's the camera on the head of the official. Tino Mobley checks back in, replacing Quentin Richardson for power. He's made basket. Power with a 10-point lead. They scored the last 10 points. Allen Anderson over Mobley, rebounded by Davis. Big Baby puts up the three. Nails it. Yeah, Josh Bowen was carrying Big Baby to shoot it. <laughs> Big Baby got his feet set and said, why not? 13 straight points for power. As the foul is committed by Davis. Big fella, you want it? They you want it? I'll home. take it. Here we go, baby. Keep it on this side, streak it. <laughs> Such a great personality. Let's go, move out. Let's go. go Brings so it. much energy. Go. Nice and the crowd, nice not only his teammates, but the crowd feeds off of it. Here's Powell, and that ends the 13-0 run by Power. Again, the challenge with just killer three teams is you don't have your leading score. And he gave you so much more. When you're just getting bastards, the force team to have to double them at times, and you open up shots for his teammates, you don't have that asset right now. So it's going to be a challenge for killer threes to put the ball in the hoop. By the way, Big Baby did hit 10 three-point field goals in his NBA career. 10 for 55. Not a, not a bad percentage for a big man. Foul committed by Allen Anderson. Setting Catino Mobley to the free throw line. and the killer threes. Big Baby leading the way with seven points. Over to Mike Rappaport. All right, I'm grabbing the Birdman, even though he doesn't want to talk to me. Birdzilla, you guys might clinch this playoff spot. How you feeling? Uh, it ain't over until it's over. We ain't clinching nothing. We're, we're focused on right now. I feel great. Uh, we're playing very sequenced uh, ball game right now. We're attacking uh, their their offense and defensive areas so we can get to the to the free throw line and get the ball back. All right, Zilla, keep doing your thing. Hey, man. Hey, man. Wait, wait, wait. What do you want to say? How did that podcast go? Uh, the podcast went great. Thanks yeah. for showing up, by the way. That was hey, awesome. Hey, I had to get my rest for today. Oh, okay. No problem. I'm 40. Man. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I did a podcast like Zilla said he was showing up, and lo and behold, Zilla didn't show up. So we have finally figured out Mike's whereabouts last night. And here he doesn't have Toronto. unprecedented access either. Yeah, unprecedented. 15-point lead for power at the half. Back in a moment. An exclusive documentary series is coming to Fox, everybody. Follow the NFL's number one draft pick as he navigates his way through the complex world of professional football. All the way up, Baker Mayfield Part 1, Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox, or stream it on Fox Sports app.
Powers up 15 at the half. Corey Maggette, who's the league leading scorer and also the leader in assists, doing work for his team right now. Birdman told our Michael Rappaport at halftime that it ain't over until it's over, but a win for Power means they are in. This isn't the first game of the night, in case you missed it. We had a very good one on Facebook, and uh, I'll recap that for you. A few highlights, a great Great game for the three-headed monsters. Now remember, they're the only undefeated team, but the ball hogs try to do work. Jermaine Taylor did his part, dropped 18 points, but was it enough? Reggie Evans dropped 24 points as well. His coach, Gary Payton, is very happy with that performance. Remember, they're the only undefeated team, so they have secured their position in the playoffs with a final score on that one of 51 to 45. So there's the stars of game one, everybody. As I mentioned, Reggie Evans with 24 points, and Jermaine Taylor, unfortunately, just wasn't enough. Their playoff hopes are not completely squashed. We'll give you more on that. The guys will break down how they are going to have a close eye on that threes company tri-state game in just a little bit. Look at Rappaport. Looks enthusiastic. He's still upset that uh, Birdman didn't make his podcast. We'll talk about it later, Rap. You look great. Uh, don't forget, though, you guys, all the action for Big 3 starts on Facebook next week. Turn into Facebook.com backslash Big 3 on Fox. Tip off on that one at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss any of the big games. we got a great game happening right now in this game. You guys, how about Big Baby? Doing work for power, a win, and they are in. Jimmy talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast that Corey Baghetti was doing his part, setting he needs to be more aggressive. And now you got Big Baby doing work from the outside. Are you kidding me? Dropping the three. Right now, he's got his team up by 10 at the half. All right, and no, no Steven Jackson for his squad. So can they make up for it in the second half? Let's get a full breakdown from the guys, Kenny and Jimmy. It's all yours. All right, thanks very much, Carissa. Remember, at one point, Jimmy, this game was tied eight apiece. Since that time, 17-2 in favor of Power. Well, it's Power, their ability to beat you inside, to beat you outside. Five, All five players that played scored the basketball, so that's uh, tough to stop, especially when you're challenged like killer threes by not having a scoring punch. Let's see how Coach Oakley and his players make the adjustment in the second half trying to put the ball in the basket. And a world peace drives and hits. He was fouled. That's his first bucket. He had missed his first eight attempts from the field. Well, you can see right here the emphasis to get the ball to the basket. This time not settling for a jump shot. Before Baghetti reaches down at the end. And maybe this is a formula for success for this killer three team, which is spread you out, take you off the dribble, try to get into the penalty, the free throw line, score some baskets. Better World Peace completes the three-point play. 12-point lead for Power. Big Baby led the way nine points in the first half. There you go. Good go, 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 go. Off the turnover. Better World Peace taps it in following the Powell miss, so he has scored the first five points of the second half. A little physical defense that time by Meta. World Peace forced McGetty to turn it over. Josh Powell couldn't finish the ball inside, but it was Meta. Better world Let's peace go. with the rebound. Go on, Ron, Good start go on. for the second half for him. He Let's fires go. in and out. Baghetti chasing it down. Baghetti driving on Powell. He was fouled. Again, you drive the ball. Put the onus on the defense to have to guard you off the dribble. You pick up a foul. Again, Shooting. one of the strategies is to get in the penalty early. Get in the penalty oh, early, now you get to the free throw line, you retain ball. possession. Get ready, get ready. That's okay. Stay out, Ron. Stay out, Ron. Here's Big Baby, puts up another three. He's two for two from downtown. And, you know, and here's, the, here's the quandary. It's like, okay, he, he hit one. Do I really go out and guard? Okay, he hits the second one. Now you do have to give him that respect to get a little bit closer and not just allow him just to line it up. And a world peace now with seven second half points, and he picks up a technical foul. Well, I'm glad to see that Meadow walked away because it, not that the ball is by him, because he kicked the ball in Detroit. He got kicked no out the game. So, come on, how's that now? You know they're terrible. Chili Cruz can't allow him with, with Stephen Jackson foul? already out. He thought he was fouled. Keep playing. Come on, man. 
to see if Meta has a point here. Gets to the basket. Not too much. I mean, he, he plays defense the same way with his chest. I think he got away with one against uh, Corey Maggetti with the same kind of play that they did the ball. To the game, who's coming out? You win the game. Well, he's selling him to get meta, and meta's telling him, Oh, he's not coming out. This is the first. No, what I say, you the game. He's out. You out. He's out. Well, Charles Oakley with a lot better world peace to go to the bench. You out the game. You out. I did. No, you did. So this is James who entered the game for better world peace and oh, has his shot rejected by Davis. Mobley gets his own rebound and the put back and the foul. All right, one more look at Charles Oakley as he wanted Metta World Peace to come out of the game. Mike, what did you see? I saw Metta World Peace get the technical, um, try to calm himself down, and I think Oakley's trying to, you know, remain in control of the team. He went for make the substitution, and Meta being Meta, Oakley being Oakley, these are two very tough, stuttering. And uh, I think Meta did the right thing because you don't want to push Oakley to the limit, and obviously you don't want to push Meta to the limit. But Charles Oakley, you know, he's the coach, and he's the OG, and he's the Silver Fox, and he's Oak. Uh, but that was, I've never seen anything like that uh, from such strong personalities before. Now Oakley is on the court. Charles Oakley is on the court. Guys, Charles Oakley is on the court. Thanks, Steve. That's a well, I mean, hey, nice it's job, guys. Nice a lot job, of implications Corey. here on this game because Killer Threes right now Shrink Shrink at two it. and three are trying to keep the pace of momentum to be able to play in the playoffs. So there's a lot of emotions right now. They cannot clinch a berth tonight in the postseason and they cannot be eliminated. But, but a victory but, will go a long way exactly. towards the playoff spot. And you, and you don't want to lose. You want to win this game to keep yourself in the hunt. Only two regular season he games remaining done. following this one. As Mobley is fouled by James. Sub. Now Ryan Hollins checks in for the killer threes. Birdman back in for power. Big baby to the bench. Lock out. Mobley hits the free throw. 18 point lead. Some fireworks on the killer threes bench. Team point lead for power. Over to Mike Rappaport. All right, I'm here with the eminable heart of Mike James. By the way, Mike, I saw you in practice the other day busting your butt. You guys have a very, let me say uh, the word, combustible team. What was going on out there with you, Oak, and Meta in that substitution? Well, we had miscommunication. I think Meta didn't know he was coming out, and Oak wanted him out, so it was a little tough. But I think that we got it together now. Have you ever thought about running for public office? <laughs> I thought about it. Great answer, Mike, <laughs> fellas. All right, Mike, uh, Jimmy, Mike James, a former teammate of yours in both Miami and Houston. Yeah, not surprised to hear how hard he works in practice. I saw it up and close and personal because he had so much to prove once he got into the NBA that Here he belonged. Go. You know, he just had to outwork everyone else in order to really maintain the level of play that he was accustomed to. So he was very political in that answer right there, too. He won a championship in Detroit, had his best season here in Toronto, yeah. averaged over 20 per game back in 05 06. And yes, hey, he is job. from Amityville, Long Island. You ever see hey, a movie? Cat. Oh, Amityville Horror, of course. Great job. This is Watch Hollins out. at the line. 
Did you get scared when you saw the enemy go hard, Jimmy? I don't get scared. Oh, okay. You didn't, so you didn't get scared when you saw enemy go hard. No. All right. I know you did. No, I mean, yes, you did. I did. I think that Chris Anderson has a future as an actor in horror films. A seven foot, tattooed, bearded nut job. Like he, maybe like the way he, he like dunks people's heads or something like that. Like Jason. I can see it. Jason Redux. Redux. Mike, I think Birdman would have been perfect. Uh, alongside uh, yourself in Prison Break back oh, in the day. Is, he would be fantastic. I, I seriously think him and Gary Payton uh, uh, off the top of my head and Scalabrini as a comedic actor, there's a lot of talent uh, behind, uh, in, front of this in front of the camera here. Uh, I would like to see Chris Anderson like in Fast and the Furious as one of the drivers. Absolutely. You know it, he would kill it in that. Let me ask you a question. How did you, who did you have to pay to get on Prison Break? Who did I have to what? Pay to get on prison break. <laughs> Who did you have to pay? Oh my God, Jimmy. <laughs> Mike is speechless for the first I time know, tonight. I'm still waiting for the answer. The world is waiting for the answer, Mike. Unless you got a pretty good, good darn agent, I know I, that. I'm a worldwide talent, Jack. You oh, know are you? Me. You worldwide? Worldwide and an international hero. You worldwide? Worldwide. Get Everybody up, knows you. Even in Toronto. Worldwide with unprecedented access. Okay. Well, I got something for you there. Okay, Ryan Holland. Come on, we need to double stop. Can we get he a... walked. Come on, we need to stop. Stop going, Ryan. 13 stop point lead for power. 39 26. Again, he found the lane. Get that one. Come on. Battling with Anderson. Hey, hey, hey Kenny, guess what? This is how worldwide our guy Michael Rappaport is. You see all the names? Michael Papaport. <laughs> and, and he's at the bottom. So all this unprecedented access in worldwide, you're at the bottom of the list, <laughs> and they didn't even spell your name right. Michael Papaport. Do you not do you not think a lawsuit is not pending about this already? <laughs> let's go, let's go. I mean, the, 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 the lawyers already got the paperwork on this thing. Do you have something to do with this, Jackson? Nothing. I believe the fifth. They ran out of ours. They're in Toronto. Metal World Peace back in the game for the Killer Threes. Remember, he had the strong start to the second half and then picked up a technical foul. His coach, Charles Oakley, wanted him to come out of the game. He did not agree. Finally went to the bench and now is back on the floor. Good, Ron, both up. Box out, box out. Stay down. Take it. Charles Oakley, of course, a former Toronto Raptor, played three seasons north of the border. And enjoyed his time here. I mean, Oak, wherever he went, was like a mentor. When we were in Houston, he came in on the back end and his knowledge. But he also challenged a lot of players, too, because he's been through the system. He's been part of winning teams. You got to give him one, okay? I'm up top. And his knowledge was invaluable, especially for young post players. You have a connection to everybody in this league, too? I should. I played on 12 teams, right? Let's Listen, let's my degrees of separation is, are not six. It's more like two <laughs> right now. But, you know, the beautiful part of it is I've been able to gain a lot of friendships. Oh, 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 this layup, block shot. But the friendships that a number of players I live in great cities. Here we go, great Bird organizations. Rebound. Um, so long term, up. it benefited me. Ryan, stay back. Be ready, be ready. No, just from a knowledge perspective of that. Great, great, great contact. It's okay. Stay well, well. hits a three. Extending the power lead. It is now 44. 28, six points away from a victory and a playoff berth. Well, how about the unselfish play this time by his power team? Yes, sir! Quentin Richardson could have forced the shot. But the ball moving right here, off a little pick. Pulls the defense in, and now you're able to hit your open man. Whether he makes the shot or not, those are the kind of shots you want to get. You want to give yourself an opportunity 
to get high percentage shots and you do that by moving the ball moving your body and playing unselfishly. Angie Lieberman had the power clinch a playoff berth with a victory tonight. Big baby back in the game replacing the Birdman Chris Anderson. By the way we saw Big Baby hit a second three earlier in this half. Something he never accomplished in an NBA game. Two three-point field goals. Well, you know, he's showing that he can get it done. Hey. And, but watch this move here. Watch how physical it is. Q going up to initiate the contact. Big Baby, Ryan Hollins thinks he's going back out. Almost all out Michael Jordan right there with the reverse pivot inside. There's Metal World Peace. He's fouled. Push baby out to the wing. Sub, sub, sub. Over to Mike. You know, Metal World Peace, obviously, with the name change and the incident that happened in Detroit, a lot of people forget about the basketball hey, Ryan, player that he was. And I remember being, I was doing something for the All-Star game. I believe it was 2005. This was the year before the incident when he was with Indiana. The All-Star game practice, which is, I mean, the least practice practice you'll ever go to. Guys were coming in late. Guys smelled like they had been out all night. Ron Artest was there before the practice, two hours early, working out with Carlisle, the coach of the Indiana Pacers, full sweat. And, you know, obviously, Met has gotten into his things and his personality and his elbows with the James Hardens. But, you know, Meta World Peace, formerly known as Ron Artest, is and was a fantastic basketball player, very skilled, very fundamental. Great point, Mike. I think a lot of people forget about how talented Meta was, especially when he first ball, came in the league. You know, you didn't know how to define his game early. If he wasn't a jump shooter, he just knew how to play. He beat you on the post, got out in transition, but you, you can't put aside the player that he was. He made his mark early in the league when he's in Chicago. We were in practice yesterday here, and I would say Better World Peace took a couple hundred shots, similar to what the Mike referenced in that All-Star game. Very impressive here at the practice court here in Toronto at the arena. He was out there for about 45 minutes shooting. Yeah, I think what gets, he did, probably didn't get the credit, he did a little bit, but he was a heck of a defensive player. I mean, new positioning on the court, maybe not the fastest, but he anticipated angles, especially with guys that were quicker than him. He was able to be a little bit more physical than players at the time, so. Yeah. Uh, Wait till he gets here. Wait, 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 wait. Fire fire to do it. All right, Power, two points away from a victory. And the Birdman finishes it off. He does. Power clinches a postseason berth in the big three. Well, the formula is not that hard to figure it out. If you share the basketball, success will come. You will be able to get easy baskets, and this is the perfect way for this Power team to win the game because they play so unselfish all season long. Pass could have had a shot, but you know what? I'm going to hook my teammate up for a better one, and Birdman can finish as well as anybody in the league. So power goes to 5-1 on the season. The emphatic slam by Birdman. Chris Anderson, his teammate, when Big Baby Davis led the way with 14 points, including two three-point field goals. So for the Hall of Famer, Nancy Lieberman, a victory, a postseason berth. Over to Mike Rappaport, Mike. All right, we're a very, very belligerent Catino Mobley. Guys got a real, no, what's the problem? We're on live TV, what? Listen, listen, man, I don't have time for this. To do somebody else, man. Yo, get over here. He's from Philadelphia. You guys clinched the, you guys clinched the playoff spot. In all seriousness, how does it feel? It feels good, man. Seriously, it feels good. I, uh, we knew, we knew because Jack wasn't here, we had to jump on him quick because they had some really good guys. And I'm just proud of our guys. You know what I mean? We got a couple more games, and let's finish, uh, see what we finish. Now, people think that you actually don't like me, and you actually don't like being interviewed me. Tell the people, tell the world, is that true or not?
Wow. Kenny. Not sure what Mike did to Catino. Well, Catino Mobley on the power. Clinch a playoff berth. They defeat the killer threes. Much more to come. Carissa Thompson up next here in Toronto. Welcome back, everybody, to Toronto. Two games in the books and a very happy Birdman. Why? Because his team, Power, is advancing to the playoffs. He had quite an outing, and, of course, his coach, Nancy Lieberman, who every single player, and Jimmy mentioned off the top, she is the glue that holds this team together, inspiration, and a lot of other reasons to love her. Uh, we have got a lot more competition coming your way and a lot of playoff implications. I asked security to keep him away from me, and they're not listening. And look at this. I it's wanted to share the screen with the great Carissa. <laughs> well, I want to know what happened to you, the spelling of your last name. For those of you guys just joining us, they spelled Rappaport's name wrong on his dressing room. I didn't even know he had a dressing room. I'm in a broom closet. It ain't a dressing room. <laughs> it's literally a broom closet. I'm sharing it with brooms and dusters. <laughs> well, because you're, you're playing cleanup. You know, you're always there to make sure everything's going well. You know yes. who else is? David Hawkins, and he's got his team in a great position, but his road to uh, the big three wasn't always paved, was it? No, it wasn't paved, but he's showing and proving, and he's sort of the uh, the sleeper guy this year, he's putting up numbers every single week. It's been a pleasure to watch him. He's uh, sort of unstoppable so far. Well, you, speaking of sleeper, you take a quick nap while we watch more on David Hawkins. All right, Carissa. When I came out of Temple, I was the leading scorer of the nation, but that draft, I didn't make the NBA. Some people's bad, no matter how talented they are. Sometimes you just don't get the right look, the right break. I couldn't let that hold me back. Everybody's road is different. And their path may be going overseas, which is not a bad path. There was a lot of people saying, you know, well, why is he even here? He didn't have really no NBA experience. Step back. I want to kiss myself. David Hawkins. You're scoring at ease week after week. Oh. I made it a point that every time I stepped on the court, I was going to leave a lasting impression and let them know that it's no fluke that I'm out here, that I belong out here. When you have that confidence, it seems like anything that you put up is going in. I'm just blessed to be on the team with Jermaine O'Neal, Mari Stoudemire, Bonzi Wills, Nate Robinson. Those guys, all stars, and had max contract careers. Man, for Dr. J to come to me and tell me, I believe in you, I want you to play your game, don't defer to these guys. That just gave me the extra confidence I needed. There's not a better feeling than that. David Hawkins continues his run for MVP. Folks, if you didn't know the name, you know him now, because David Hawkins is a baller. David Hawkins, unbelievable what he is doing for his team. The numbers don't lie right there. You know who else doesn't lie? Or at least, I don't think he does. Rappaport. Not a liar, this guy. No, I'm not look a liar. At, look at us sharing a, a seat. I, I, not only do I not have a seat, I don't have a locker room. So, I mean, it's like 0 for 2 for so far. Well, you know who does have a locker room? Three's Company. Obviously, David will try to do his deal for Tri-State, but what does Three's Company really quickly have to do to be successful tonight? Well, they're Baron davis list. I think Dante Jones and Drew Gooden have to step up. Uh, otherwise, this team is uh, in trouble, and this game's going to get away from them quick because Tri-State is looking to clinch and move on. Unprecedented access from Michael Papaport coming your way. We're coming to you live with our next game. We're in Toronto, everybody. Stick around. Any more action coming your way. Three's Company and Tri-State. Stay with us live on FS1. Back in Toronto, we'll look at the big three standings, the three-headed monsters and power with victories earlier tonight. They have both clinched berths in the postseason. Huge game coming up between Tri-State at 4-1, coached by Julius Irving, Three's Company, head coach Michael Cooper at three up and two down. To Mike Rappaport. All right, I'm here with David Hawkins, the man they call the Hawk. What do you guys need to do to get this victory and clinch your playoff spot? We got to defend, first off, play team, team defense, team basketball, and we got to score. We got to do whatever it takes to win. That's what we're going to do. All right, well, good luck, Hawk. Get out there. Good luck, man. Guys? All right, Mike. David Hawkins coming off a huge game last week. We check out the rosters. Three's company. DeMar Johnson, Drew Gooden, Dante Jones. 
With the reserves, Andre Amit, Jason Maxfield, Tri-State, Nate Robinson, Amari Stoudemire, David Hawkins, Bonzi Wells, and Robert Height. Tri-State in blue. Hall of Famer, Dr. J, Julia Serving. David Hawkins with Nate Robinson and Amari Stoudemire. This is Hawkins picking up where he left off a week ago. Again, team basketball. You share it, you shoot it, you score it. Defensively, they're going to come out and be active. You can't take for granted that Baron Davis is not here. They're still a dangerous team. Blue's company is. Blue's company started the game with Drew Gooden, Damar Johnson, and Andre Emmett. Emmett short from three. This is Hawkins for Tri-State. Nate Robinson. Guarded by Drew Gooden. Robinson puts up a three. Take it, Andre! This match inside. Gooden spinning on Robinson. Up short. Kept alive by three's company. We'll live. We'll live. No, sir. No, sir. Emmett defended by Stoudemire. And he's fouled. Selling for jump shots. I'll take that fucking ball for that. Ten-time NBA All-Star. Eleven years with the Philadelphia 76ers. The doctor. It was an image here where Michael Cooper at the beginning of the game came over to, to the dock. You know, wish him good luck. Immediately, you know what I thought about? 83 finals. Dr. J. Rock the cradle. You know, when I got into the league in, in Dr. J, I went right to that exact spot where Doc took off on that dunk on Michael Cooper. Just like, like, unbelievable. You were 12 years old when they matched up against one another in the NBA Finals that year. I wonder where Rappaport was watching. You know, I know exactly the play that Jackson's talking about. And I think that's so cool that you went to that spot. And I remember watching that game. Uh, that wasn't in the finals. It was on tape delay if you were on the East Coast. And Doc had the break, and he caught the cradle. And listen, there's so many incredible players in the NBA and the big three in college in the park that do a bunch of crazy things, and they've superseded Doc. But I've never, ever seen anyone do that kind of dunk on somebody the way Doc did. He cradled it with one hand and banged it on Coop's head. And when I saw that embrace before the game, I, saw, I thought of the exact same thing, you, you guys. And I grew up a Philadelphia Sixer fan. So, to me, that was ultimately everything to me to see Doc do that. He was trying to grow an afro like Doc back in the day. You guys remember the ABA slam dunk contest when, and there's Michael Cooper on the Three's Company bench. Slam dunk contest when uh, Dr. J took off from the free throw line. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, how about the dunk contest back in the ABA? When uh, Doc took off from the free throw line. Let's go, You see the block here inside. Some great memories. Hard to believe that those matchups in the... NBA Finals between these coaches 35 years ago. I know. Michael, great play right here by good recognizing short shot clock. But how about, and, and Rap brought up a great point. Back then, Finals were take the late. Right. So you're talking about, that's why I said you got to give a lot of credit to David Stern and what he was able to do with the NBA. See DJ lining up the three right here. Got to knock down that shot. But as recently as the early 80s, delayed tape. That's right, delayed tape. But oh, oh. the ability now, I thought with David Stern, the insight to start to promote individuals. That's one of the popularity. So, of course, it didn't hurt to have Magic the Bird come in. <laughs> Here's Gooden from three. And Cooper not happy with the shot selection early by his team. Give us some room. Give us some room. Kind of just settling too much for contested long shots. Stoudemire stepped out of bounds. Hey, Nate, get him all in the game. I'll tell you what, it wasn't a hug after Doc dunked on him. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, because you know he's coming now. Well, Michael Cooper wound up with five oh, championship yeah. rings of his own. Oh, yeah. Doc got him on that dunk, but Coop got four more rings, so. Gotta get up! Stay up! 7 0 run for Three's company. They now lead Tri State 9 7. Oh, 
It's all committed by Andre Emmett. Ref. Now I like that matchup too because Hawk, uh, David Hawkins, and also Andre Emmett are big guard four. They love to initiate contact. They love to get inside and bang a little bit, so it's a really good matchup between those two. Hawkins hey, connects on the free throw, hey, tied at nine. Drew, Drew, we hit halftime when first team hits 25. 50 wins the game, you must win by two. Emmett followed up by Hawkins. And now it's Emmett. After three's company, was able to get it right back. Yeah, Tri-State that time off the turnover wasn't able to take advantage of getting the ball inside. Wanted to get it to Amari. Kind of bobbled and it went right back to Three's company so they can finish it. Drew, Drew. Screen set by Stoudemire for Nate Robinson. Couple of former New York Knicks. Monty Wells in the game right. now yeah, for Tri-State. Jason Maxiel checks in for Three's company. Johnson knocks it down. Hey man, come your phone now. Come on, come on. Both teams over 500. This game has playoff implications all around the league. An 11 2 run for Three's Company. They have a four point advantage. <laughs> 13 9 lead for Three's Company. As we check in live with the head coach of Tri-State, the Dr. Julius Irving. Julius, uh, your thoughts on what you've seen so far in this game? They have a little momentum going their way. I mean, I think we're just kind of a little lackadaisical considering the, the, the talent that we have. You know, I mean, I'd like to see us be a little more aggressively pursuing uh, plays that they have to defend versus just taking the quick shot. Or taking ill advised, you know, long range shots and missing and just, you know, one and done. Doc, I saw you and, and Coop embrace and immediately took you to the Rock the Cradle, Doc, in yeah. Philly. Yeah. Walk me through, going through your mind right there, when we, you saw we, him right we, there, what, what was going through your mind on that, Doc? Well, you know, we've been we've been doing it all year. And uh, it started out, started out the first week. He came over, he said, I ain't afraid of you. <laughs> I said, why you got to be afraid of me, man? You know, it's what, what happened, happened a long time ago. And, you know, it kind of kept him, his image and his, li and his uh, likeness alive and mine too. And right now, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, name, face, and likeness, right? Uh -huh. If you get that, you get that going. So that, that play has helped in that regard. Let's put it that way. Now, one of your players, David Hawkins, hey! certainly making a name for himself in the big three uh, this summer. What's impressed you about his play? You know, David's our most valuable guy. So he's going to play the most minutes, and I expect a lot of him, because what he's shown in the first five games is that he definitely could be MVP in this league. All right, go pay attention to the game. All right. Thanks, Julius. All right. And that says a lot right there, talking about that. Doc is telling you that Hawk is their most valuable player. You got Amari, you got Nate Robinson, Dane O'Neill, but it's, it's Hawk that he gives the credit to in regards to playing the most minutes and their most valuable player. And that's saying something when his teammates include guys who have long NBA careers, Amari Stoudemire, Nate Robinson, Fonzie Wells. Hawkins has been tremendous. Boy, but it's a confidence thing. He had a lot to prove, too. Again, a uh, lot of other players played in the NBA long tenures. They're like, okay, well, why are you playing? You didn't really play. Okay, I'm going to show you why Doc wanted me to come over here. I'm going to show you why he puts the ball in my hand. And he doesn't take for granted. He continues to work. He's very humble. And that's why this Tri-State team has been able to be, you know, 4-1 to this point. Talk about how y'all do that together. DJ, stay up. Tri-State can clinch a playoff berth with a victory here tonight. Three-headed monsters in power. Already headed for the postseason. Height off the back of the rim from three. Rebounded by Dante Jones, who joined Three's company prior to last week's game in a trade with Trilogy. There you go. 
Max Eel was tied up underneath by Robert Height, who committed the personal foul. Yeah, but excellent recognition that time by Dante Jones, understanding that Jason Max Eel had the advantage, height and size-wise, on Robert Height inside. Immediately got him the ball, but then Max Eel, recognizing the baseline was open, was able to drive, well, spin, and pick up a foul. Max Seal, 10 years in the NBA, 8 of the 10 with the Detroit Pistons. Five point lead for Three's company. Get up, Emmett, stay out. Hawkins guarded by Emmett. Hawkins throws it back out. Here is Height from three. And it's chased down by Andre Emmett. Dante Jones. He hits the floor after Wells made contact. <laughs> you don't think this is physical, baby. You can just watch this interchange, this exchange inside of Bonzi. Not happy with something that happened a little bit earlier. And I saw it coming. But Bonzi was not going to allow Dante Jones to just get to the basket uncontested. The foul? So, yeah, we're reviewing that right now, the officials, for a flagrant foul. Hey, listen, they're in the five now. Everything to the basket unless you're wide open. Everything to the basket. If it is a flagrant, it will be two two-point free throws plus possession. Well, the question is, was Bonzi going for the ball when he slapped down and made contact with Dante? You tell me. It's real close. Because of the contact, you know, and just like in, in, in the NBA, anything above the net, unintentional or not, is considered a flagrant one. Yeah. It appears as if the ball is already gone. Yeah. So I would anticipate that the call wouldn't be any different here. It is a flagrant one. Yeah. It's going to be a So the a flagrant on Monty Wells. So again, that will lead to two two-point free throws plus possession for Three's company. Robinson singing along. Good hawk. Good hawk. So here's Jones to the free throw line. Played for eight NBA teams. Won a championship ring back in 2016 with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Misses the first free throw. Hits the second. Three's company now leads by seven. Amari Stoudemire back in the game for Tri-State. Hey, David elbow, Hawkins hey, hey, hold, sits down elbow, with a game-high seven hold. points. What's fair? So Three's company What's maintains fair? possession, no, finally the flagrant foul. Here's Emmett over height. Andre Emmett extends the Three's company lead to nine. And yeah, Three's company again. You don't have your lead score, your, probably your best player is Aaron Davis, but what you have is a determined Three's company team that's not going to let that deter them from being competitive. Right now. They score the last eight points. An opportunity to extend the run. Screen set by Max Seal for Dante Jones. Three on the shot clock. Bonzi Wells with the rebound. This is Robert Height on the fade. It's good, and the foul. And right now, Three's Company is not happy because on the previous possession, as you watch Robert Height get to the basket, and Dante Jones able to slap him and call the foul. Now, on Three's Company's previous possession, Dante Jones, I think it was, or Emmett, down the lane, got grabbed, and the officials didn't call it. So that's why Coach Cooper right now is a little irate on the sideline. Let's rock up. Come on. All right, play some D, man. Y'all talk. Y'all talk. Nothing easy. Right there. Go get, get him. I got ball. Six point lead go get him, for go get Three's him, company. Coached by Michael Cooper. 21 to 15. Here's Emmett. 
And Emmett gets the roll. Andre Emmett out of on, Texas Rogers. Tech. Had a brief stint with both the Memphis Grizzlies and the New Jersey Nets. Back when they were still in Jersey. Here's Stoudemire. Rebounded by Max Shield. Yeah, pretty good defense that time by Max Shield. Not letting Stat get closer inside, forcing him to take that little jump hook. Oh, oh, yeah. Crossover dribble by Emmett. And that will take us to halftime. Andre Emmett, who played collegiately for Bob Knight at Texas Tech, with a game high 10 points, coming off an 18 point game last week. So a 10-point lead for Three's Company, 25-15 at the half. Much more to come from Toronto. We'll hear from Carissa Thompson when we return. It's the Big Three on FS1. On Fox, Jose Aldo takes on Jerry Stevens, followed by the controversial rematch between Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier. It's all tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Right now, Three's Company is up at half, 25 to 15 over Tri-State. A quick reminder for you guys as we're in week six here, a lot of playoff implications. We've got uh, two games in the books, two more to go, as we're halfway through the third one here. Let's take a look at the playoff scenarios because I know there's some other teams who will uh, get in or not get in based on this. So three-headed monsters, so now they clinched a playoff berth here. And Power, the second game of the night, they also clinched a playoff berth with a win as well. And Tri-State will clinch the win if they, in fact, are able to pull this thing out. So let's take a look for those of you just joining us at the first half action so far between these two teams. You had David Hawkins, who we highlighted before this game started. Dr. J saying he is clearly the MVP on that team. And Demar Johnson trying to do work for his squad as well as he finds them down here at half. Making moves. He's got six points as we look forward to the second half right there. Both players doing work, but it is only halftime, you guys. Both teams so far, you got three's company, three and two on the year, Tri-State four and one. So both sitting pretty, but again, this game will have some implications on some other teams, whether or not they make it to Dallas or not. All right, thanks very much, uh, Carissa. We get set for the second half here in Toronto. But what impressed you, Jimmy, in the first half of this game? It, it, was, it was all about Three's company and their energy. You're down a player. I talked about a Baron Davis not being here, but that didn't pour any kind of effort for them to come out and establish themselves on the offensive end. Defensively, I thought they played extremely well. It's a matter of bringing that same kind of energy, effort, and also team play into the second half if they want to finish out this game. Speaking of energy, over to Mike Rappaport. All right, I'm with five-time NBA champion, the man who was on the receiving end of the iconic Koopa Loop. You're against your former rival, Dr. J. You won some, you lost some. There's one play, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Well, listen, there won't be no ducking tonight, because we going full for it right now. All right, what do you feel, now do you want to get this win just for that one oh. dunk to get back from for that one dunk? No, it's to stay in the, the, the playoff race. We need this win, but it makes it extra special if it's dunk. All right, cool. <laughs> Guys? <laughs> I love when he tell the truth right there. Yeah, playoff race, but gotta beat dunk. All right. uh, Michael Cooper's team with a 10-point advantage on Julius Irving and Tri-State as we begin the second half. Good with Emmett and Johnson on the floor for three's company. Kenny Albert, Jim Jackson, Mike Rappaport, and Carissa Thompson here from Toronto. Stoudemire with the block on Gooden, but Emmett is right there to follow up. Yeah, and that's why you just don't give up on the play. Okay, great shot blocked by... Amari Stoudemire, but Andre Emmett able to stay with the play. Find himself an easy layup. Off the steal. Three's company is it right back. Here is Robinson hitting a three. Nate Robinson with his second three-point field goal of the game. Yeah, and I like to see if Nate can get going, especially with that jump shot, which opens up so much more for his game. Nice shot of the officials' backside there. <laughs> Block shot <laughs> by Stat. 
Hey, able hold. to pin it against the glass. Hold. Hey, Robinson, squaring up. That blocked the third for Stoudemire in this game. A real active defensively. Now he wants to translate that into some more touches on the post for him offensively. Right, he has not yet scored. There's Johnson. Lamar Johnson, who played in over 300 games with four teams. And DJ, this is a smart play. Don't complicate. He got the size and height advantage over Nate Robinson. Just keep it simple and shoot right over the top. And, and force Tri State to, and Dr. J to have to make a decision on how they want to play that mismatch. Five seconds on the 14 second shot clock. Johnson lays it in to extend the threes company lead. It's now 31-18. Yeah, and, and this is the first time I've seen this Tri-State team not really on, in sync offensively, which is affecting their defense as well. There's Hawkins, and he was fouled by Drew Gooden. Good night. Bobby Wells will replace Nate Robinson for Tri-State. Try stayed at four and one, but they trail this game by 13. They can clinch a playoff berth with a victory. Because power won their game earlier tonight. Well, it's not, it was not going to be a cakewalk to get this victory because, uh, you know, it's just sometimes the mentality when you come into a game assuming that you're just going to walk in and win. A team like that, like this, hey, these company teams who's feisty and has something to prove, they kind of push you back on your heels and it's tough for you to respond. Still a lot of time left in this game to try to see if you get back into it. Let's see if they can change the momentum. Wells with the rebound of the good and miss. This is Hawkins spinning on Emmett. Hawkins. Then this is off to Stoudemire. Hand it knocked away. John Clark at one. Hawkins on the fade. It's an air ball. And Emmett slams it home. And, and that was an example right there of this tri state team not on the same page. Hawk hesitated on that shot. He should have just knocked it in. Andre Emmett now with 14 to lead the way for Three's Company. I'm with DeMar Johnson. What do you guys need to do to close this game out, DeMar? It's a beautiful night in Toronto. I know you got to play, but I got to ask you this question. We just got to do what we've been doing and finish the game out. We've been playing great. We got to keep playing defense and taking advantage of opportunities. All right, get out there, finish this game. That's called unprecedented access. The guy stopped what he needed to do to speak to me. People walk by you, Jimmy Jackson, and act like they don't know you sometimes. I've seen it happen. Oh, yeah. From the guy whose name is last on the board and spelled wrong. <laughs> You know, and actually, the only reason why he talked to you because you grabbed him and forced him to say something. He really didn't want to stay there. You were in his way, man. Exactly. And he still didn't sit. Did, did he offer you any twisters yet? Negative. In between the games, anything like that? Negative. Some people are just not team players, man. Uh, and he's sitting there laughing and eating the twizzler right there. But to be fair, we did not offer him any M&Ms. That's not the point. Kenny, just, just, just me and you, man. Okay, just me and you. All right, we'll talk about it later. And besides, isn't that my m and for you? <laughs> that shield all alone. But again, presence of mind. Turn it over. Recognize who may be open underneath the basket. DeMar Johnson sips a pass right into Jason Maxfield for easy two. 14-point lead for Freeze Company. Here's Stoudemire spinning on Max Seal. And Max Seal is... Call for the foul. Freeze Company bench not happy about it. No, right there. That was Andre Emmett. I'm sorry. <laughs> Off the recovery. And then Max Hill straight up and down on that one. I don't know if he got a lot of... And that's the official call lower body, but I thought he went straight up and was able to block that shot. Stoudemire without a point. Tonight, scored 10 last week. Monty Wells kept alive by David Hawkins. Now Wells. Dante 
Jones just checked in for Three's company. On the floor with DeMar Johnson and Jason Maxiel. Johnson at long range, kept alive by Jones. Jones is fouled. Three headed monsters at six and all. Power at five and one. And a technical foul has been assessed. Bonzi Wells has been ejected. And Bonzi getting his money's worth right now. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't do that, Bonzi. I mean, if you get kicked out, you have no need to throw anything at the official. I know he's upset he's a competitor, but you don't want to have any of that go on. The officials do a good job of just walking away from it. Wells not happy about the foul that was called. Well, it was a foul. He shouldn't have, you know, test the shot without foul, and it's an obvious call. And, he's, he, and he was mad at the official because he felt Dante Jones on the offensive rebound kind of pushed Bonzi, and the officials didn't call it. But, oh, right there. You can't do that. He just, I think he tried to talk to him after he realized that he made a mistake by pushing the official, but it was too late then. Company with a 49-21 lead on Tri-State. Right, unprecedented access with Nate Robinson. Nate, what's going on out there? Your guy Bonzi Wells got kicked out of the game. You got kicked out of the game a couple of weeks ago. What's going on with your team, Nate? Man, I don't know right now, man. We ain't, we, I don't know. We ain't making no shots right now. We got to figure out we ain't getting no stops. Doc sat me down because I'm too short, so it's, it's a lot going on right now. And I see you're playing with your hair. What's wrong with your hair? You can so you look fantastic. Nothing, man. I'm just, I just want to play in the game. I just want to play. All right, we'll try to pull this thing together. And uh, you know, like you need you, you need players on the court to win, Nick. Stay in the game. I am. I ain't gonna get kicked out no more. Unprecedented. A win by three is company hey, hey, will eliminate run two teams. Ball hogs and ghost ballers. Go D, go D. Two go teams have clinched playoff spots. Tri State will clinch with a win, but they trail by 18. Hey, got eight. We got eight. Jason Maxfield, Dante Jones, and Andre Emmett on the floor for three is company. Emmett. It's a three. He now has 17 points to lead the way for three's company. Yeah, Andre Emmett, I talked about, you talked about Hawkins being able to score. But Andre Emmett, I think, came in here on the mission, Kenny. To walk out of here. Here's Emmett again. Off the back of the rim. With the that time, good block out. Let's see if Tri-State can take advantage of it. Hawkins puts up a three. Stoudemire keeps it alive. Hawkins fouled by Max Seal. Well, and, and generally, too, this Tri-State team has done an excellent job up to this point of really sharing the ball, moving, the getting basket. guys in positions to be able to score baskets. This game in particular has been more individual, more one-on-one, -on -one, settling for shots instead of working together as a team. And that's why Freeze Company has been much more successful offensively, but more importantly, been able to guard. Stoudemire with his first bucket. First team to 50 wins the game, must win by two. Three's company with the basketball, eight points away. There's Evan, he's had the hot hand. Draws a foul, it's good. Hawkins commits the personal. Evan will head to the line. And it's almost like one of those shots. Don't take, don't, oh, okay, it was a good shot. Oh, it was a good shot. But see, what Michael Cooper wants from his team as David Hawkins kind of bailed Andre Emmett out right there, is to continue to attack off the dribble to get the ball to the basket and don't settle for jumps. At that time, Emmett was able to make an outstanding shot through the contact. 
Sotomayor hits the floor, fouled by Dante Jones. Mars Donemeyer to the line, six-time All-Star in the NBA. It's the two-point free throw. Hey, Let's see if, play on uh, six points. Let's see if Tri-State can put some back-to-back -to -back possessions together to score. No turnover. Now you got to play D. And that turnover, too, was a prime. Like last week, that would have been an alley That would have been a dunk back door for Amari. But that, again, another prime example that this team is just not on the same page tonight. Hey, D. D, D, stay over there. Stay over there. I got him. Got to get it. 19-point lead for Freeze Company with the basketball. Here is Max Shield. Hey, touched it! Did Evan touch it? Should it have been no, offensive interference? I, I, it looked like at the end right there. Possible pass interference. Go. They will take a look at it. We're choosing to look at it. Points have been put up on the board. So hold on. Was it One offensive goaltending? We saw on that side. It's game management. If we have the opportunity, let's take a look. I understand that, but if it takes more. As the shot goes up, keep your eye on Dante Jones coming in from the right of the screen. Andre Emmett right there. I don't know, did his hand go up? If you touch the rim, it's, it's basket in the fingers. Okay, so let's take a look right here. Yeah, his hand did touch the rim. It, it touched the rim, and it got a piece of the ball on it. And it came down a little bit, so. He didn't touch it. Yeah. They will take the points off the board. No basket. Easy call. So it remains a 44-25 lead for Three's Company. Third of four games tonight here in Toronto. They just come back. That's our break. This is week six of eight in the regular season. Playoff matchups. August 17th at Dallas championship game in Brooklyn, August 24th. There's Hawkins back out. Height from three, kept alive by Hawkins. And Hawkins unable to hit. Yeah. When it goes bad for you, it goes back. Those normal layups that you normally would get. Just not going in. Hits the floor, hits the basket. Yeah, Three's company comes right back. Your missed layup, missed opportunity. It's all to Three's company able to come back and score easy baskets of their own. Four points away from the victory. Knocked out of bounds by Max Seal as DeMar Johnson checks in for Three's company. He replaces Andre Emmett. What a night. 9 of 16 from the field. 21 points to go along with 5 rebounds and 3 assists. Max Hill commits the personal. Send in Stoudemire back to the line. I think the question was, who was going to step up Baron Davis being out? Before was DeMar Johnson, who had an outstanding game, was able to knock down some shots. This game, it was all about Andre. It's been all about Andre Emmett. From outside, inside, getting to the basket, free throw line. Here's Emmett. Be going, hit. Leading the way for Freeze Company with 21 points. Height off the back of the rim. Jones back hey, out. Hey. Max Seal. I don't think he cleared it. Call it Nate. So it will be Tri State basketball. Yeah. They did not bring it all the way back out. No. And I think Jason Max Seal thought about it too because he hesitated a little right. bit. Wasn't quite for sure. Wasn't quite sure. Damn, man. This match inside. Hey. Stoudemire draws the foul let's on go, Jones. Let's go. Let's go. Both of y'all. Stoudemire back go. to the line. Right, the and this is the way you can get back in too. Trading fouls, getting to the free throw line, tame possession, but you got to get stopped. And right now.
this tri-state team hasn't been able to put together two three four defensive stops that allows them to really cut into this deficit brief rest for Andre Emmett he's back in the game along with Drew Gooden well, coach Cooper is smart he understands that Emmett has been the guy that's you want him to close out the game he's the one guy on this team that can do that Emmett pulls up and gets the roll So Breeze Company down two points away. Emmett with the steal. Foul. And then he's fouled Game by Hawkins. Yeah, I can tell you just watching Nate Robinson in front of us. The camera doesn't catch it, but he's walking back and forth. And he wants to get in the game. And I think the reason why he may be out is that Doc thinks it's a mismatch. Either go, on Emmett go, or on it. DeMar Johnson. Right here, right here. On the defensive side for Nate. Rejection by Hyatt. Here's the fire with the slam. Did Nate tell Mike Brown before the interview I'm not in because he thinks I'm too short? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's. Nate listed at 5 9. Here's Emmett. Good in for three for the win. Good in knocks it down. Breeze Company with a 51-29 victory. They go to four and two on the season. Tri-State drops to four and two. Thank you, Julius Irving's squad will have to wait until next week to clinch a playoff berth. I uh, didn't bring the effort early on, Kenny. I mean, Breeze Company brought the fight to the table. Tri-State didn't respond. They didn't look on the same page at all early on. Other than the first basket when David Hawkins came out and scored, but it was this kind of action all day for Three's company. DeMar Johnson talked about it. We got to play team basketball, play defense. We got opportunity to score. Let's take advantage of it. They did all three this evening. So that eliminates the ball hogs because they lost earlier today and Three's company won their game. Both of these teams now 4-2. Andre Emmett led the way with 23 points for Three's company. So three games in the books. Back out to Mike. All right, Andre Emmett, you had a great game. Big win for Three's company. You guys are alive. How you feeling? Feel good, man. I was, I was so ready for this game from last week. I felt like we got we let one slip away last week. So this week I put a lot of work strategy with the guys and do whatever we had to do to win. Now you guys have been playing like a team. You've been very cohesive, but your star, Baron Davis, hasn't been around. What do you know? What does the team know about his injury and will he return? Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's rehabbing. He's getting better every day. And uh, he's not here, so it's the next man up. And uh, we can't wait for him to get back. We need him. Now obviously in the, in the 70s and in the 80s, Dr. J and Michael Cooper had their wars. Was there any added incentive to get back for that famous iconic, iconic dunk when Michael Cooper, great defensive player, got banged on, he got banged on his head. Did that come up in the locker room or in the scheme of things? No, it didn't. You know what, Dante messed with him all the time about that. But uh, it was definitely some motivation. So I stayed being a, you know, pretty popular team. I wanted to come out here and get at him. All right, well, great game, great win. Continue doing your thing. And uh, I hope, can't wait to see you guys continue rolling. Fellas. All right, thanks, Mike. A look at the updated standings. Two teams have clinched. Ball Hogs and Ghost Ballers have been eliminated for playoff contention. Trilogy can keep their playoff hopes alive with a victory in our next game over Ghost Ballers. Top four make it to the postseason. Two teams control their own destiny. Three's Company and Tri State both at four and two. Killer Threes with an outside chance, but they will need help. Big win for Three's Company, led by Andre Emmett. Game high, 23 points for Michael Cooper's squad. Much more to come. Carissa Thompson and then Trilogy will take on the Ghost Ballers in our finale tonight here in Toronto. In Toronto, it's the big three on FS1, three-headed monsters and power have already clinched Playoff berths. Trilogy must win this game to stay alive in the hunt 
for the postseason. It's game four from Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Trilogy and Ghost Ballers. <laughs> it's, it's something about today about getting on air, right? Now. Everybody wants to just mess with you right now. Before well, you go the, the head coach, Rick, Rick Moore, was <laughs> just over here. I think you wanted some camera time. Yeah. Try to take some of your cough drops, too. We can have him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you should give him up to him. Well, his team yeah. needs a victory to stay alive. Well, which trilogy team is going to show up? The one we saw dominate or the one that's been not as good? But last week, statement game, this is the game they need. And um, to me, it's all about the body language with this team. Shout out to Cam's bringing it. James White get back to playing at a high caliber like he did last year. Chance off the mark, gets it, a rebound, lays it in with the left hand. Yeah, and despite the losses, Go, it, it, the Trilogy can figure out okay. a way to kind of get themselves up. They're still a very dangerous team. But they have multiple scores, they play physical. Ricky Davis knocks it down. The Trilogy in red, the defending champs, but they lost their first three games this season, now one and four. Al Harrington from Long Range, Harrington, James White, Rashard McCants, on the floor for Trilogy, Carlos Boozer, Ricky Davis, and Mike Bibby for Ghost Ballers. There's Bibby rejected by McCants. How about the first four-point shot that we got of the day by Al Harrington? Yeah, no foul. It only yeah, a foul. Look at the three. rosters. Last game, we didn't have that. Mahorn hey, Ralph, and George Gervin, the, the head coaches. Gervin, yeah, the Hall yeah. of Famer, eight-time NBA All-Star. Shot clock violation. Ralph, he put that hand on the back, Ralph. Hey, Ralph, that went no foul with Bibby. Al, get down there. Big embrace right there, prior Al. to the game. Take a look at it for me. Durbin, a Detroit native. Behorn, of course, one of the bad boys. Spent many years in Detroit as James White gives Trilogy a 4-2 lead. And, and I think on, that's you, the key you, with this Trilogy team. Stay so low, much is going to be paying low, attention no to McCants and man, also no Al Heron. This is where James White last year really took advantage of that. Under, being able to exploit the defense knowing that the opposing team couldn't provide sure. much help no the two that I just mentioned. Carlos Boozer unable to hit. Hey, the move, Here's White. Right into the paint, spins, and it's rebounded by Boozer. Ricky Davis in and out, Harrington to the rebound. Watch the foul, watch it, no foul. Hands. Bibby. Good shot, good shot, good shot. He didn't clear. They did not clear the ball past the three-point line. He didn't clear. No, they're, what they're talking about is Al didn't clear the lane. Al Harrington. James White took the ball outside the three-point line, but Al Harrington maintained his position inside the lane without clearing it. Go get it. By yourself, Shotty. By yourself. There's Harrington number three. The right there just stays in the lane. Ricky Davis with his second field goal. And, and, and ghost yeah, ball, as you're talking about I saving the face, you don't want to go the whole season and don't win a game. Well, yeah. Your pride is on the line. He's playing in front of a packed crowd. Oh, audience on TV. You have to win a game. Short. See how the ghost ball is oh, yeah. He got their first oh. victory. Maybe oh. for Boozer. Hey. Here's Harrington. Al Harrington. Al Harrington averaging go over right. 19 points go per right, game. Go. Oh, it makes this so hey, tough, hey. though. I mean, in his awareness of when to go, when to pull up for a jump shot, when to play physical is what makes it so tough. Oh. He's playing physical moves, able hey, that's how he did to get deep yeah. to dribble right that's now. Really post position, and Coach Gervin is telling him, like, that's how easy it is. Tied at six. Halftime when one team reaches 25. First team to 50 wins the game. Harrington from three, and it's rebounded by Bibby. Davis is fouled. Foul committed by Rashad McCants. Box out, let's go. Ricky Davis to the free throw line, fifth leading scorer in the league. 
12 NBA seasons with seven teams. Davis with six of the eight points for Ghost Ballers. They lead by two. Yeah, I think he's. Two man game. He wanted to come out early in this game and establish himself offensively. There is White from three. Boozer with the rebound. 14 second shot clock in the big three. Trilogy with the basketball trailing by two. Here's Harrington spinning it to the paint on Boozer. Gets the roll. Well, multiple moves that time. I thought Al Harrington bought the ball back to. Carlos moves it, but he was still tricky with it and still able to get that shot up. Tied at eight. Come on. Davis picks up the dribble. Bibby to a cutting boozer, and he's fouled by Harrington. We go back to that last possession by the trilogy. Al Harrington showing some moves, spin moves, and he brings it back right here, but able to go through the contact to finish. But it was good defense by Booz right here, but just this better O by Al Harrington. Carlos Boozer, 13 seasons in the NBA. Hits the free throw. Boozer tied for the lead lead in rebounding over the first five weeks. But his team looking for their first victory. Here we go. Side, take it that side. You know, it's interesting too because this goes ball the team. If you look at the roster with Bibby, Davis, and Boozer, it's no way you would say that they had to won a game. So, I mean, he is, and I think probably George Gervin are trying to figure out what, what's that missing ingredient, why? You know, a lot of it, too, is you see Al Harrison right here at the top. This Ghost Ballers team finds themselves in positions where they get down early, they start to press, and then they can't get back into game. The talent is not the issue in regards to why they have to won. Speaking of talent, Al Harrington. Steady dive. This a frustrate anybody. You got it, Booth. Drummer G with a one-point lead. Here's Boozer yeah, from three. Yeah. Boozer down with seven to lead the way for Ghost Ballers. Timeout taken by Trevor Joe. It's the big three on FS1. Ghost Ballers with a two-point lead on Trilogy. Trilogy head coach Rick Fahorn is with Mike. All right, I'm with one of the original bad boys. You guys have had a topsy-turvy up and down season. What are you gonna do to stay in this game, Rick? Right now, we just gotta make sure that we don't allow them to get the dribble penetration so they can get their shots. Pretty good team, they're not, they haven't won a game, but don't underestimate them because they can play. Now, I heard you say before the game that George Gervin was your idol. What about the Iceman meant so much to you growing up as a fan before you made it to the pros? Man, I still got that doggone dude on my, on, my, on my wall, the poster of him being the Iceman. And that's a good thing when he's sitting on those cubes. Did you ever get to play against him? How was that like when you got to play against your idols when you finally made it? Is that crazy to make that transition to your now you're an opponent? Yeah, but let me get back to this game. I'm gonna beat Rick Mahorn up one week. I am. No, one week I'm gonna I'm gonna pick him up, Hulk Hogan style, and just body slam him. Let me ask you this, Mike. Since you talked about playing with your idol, how was it when you finally got a chance to play with me back in the Rock and Jocks? I, I could tell you were nervous and you were so excited to just be the same presence of me. Well, you were one of the guys that like it was like kind of like okay, like I'll, I'll do it even though he's there. But for me, playing in those games, being around you guys, talking to Rick Mahorn, it means I love basketball. I'm such a fan. I have re such respect for professional athletes, specifically professional basketball players. So it means, it means the world, even playing with you and Rock and John. <laughs> Myers thought about shooting from the four-point shark going out. James White. What is it? In? Who, who are the guys, Jim? Yeah. Who you had up on your wall that you couldn't believe you were playing against when you entered the NBA? Um, when I played against Magic, um, Michael, um, finally in the NBA, I had a chance when I was in college when I worked this basketball camp to actually play with him and see Mike Bibby with the fourth man shot. Bibby! Last year led the big three, six four point field goals. Yeah, and right there making them pay right now. Ghost Ball is playing well, but. 
Williams. Finally, when I got to the league and got a chance to play against Michael in a game, I mean, it was crazy. If Mike Bibby lined it up, still got that beautiful stroke, even though he has more upper body strength and girth. He still has a soft touch from 30 feet away. Yeah. Here's Derek Byers to the line. Let me ask you a question. You're talking about idols. Was there anybody that you've worked with that you know you always looked up to or said, you know, that's somebody I would love to when I finally get my chance to work with? Definitely a lot of guys. And here in Canada, Tonight, Wayne Gretzky was a guy that I always enjoyed watching and having the opportunity to call his games and, and meet him and spend some time with him. He was probably the one. Never worked to them, but right. interviewed him on numerous occasions. And he grew up uh, in this province, yeah, Brantford, Ontario. Right, it's kind of surreal, right, when that happens. And now getting the opportunity to work about 20 games a year with Will Clyde Frazier. Oh, yeah. The guy who I grew up watching. And now we get to do a bunch of broadcasts together. In fact, Mike Rappaport joined us. Wow. We've hit halftime here in Toronto. That's a great question. We'll try to find out the answer. Halftime, game four, big three. 25 18 lead for the winless Ghost Ballers over Trilogy, the defending champs. Tell me no sub. No sub. You hear me? Over to Mike. All right, I'm here with Mike Bibby. You're back from your hammy injury. You're knocking down fours, you're knocking down threes. You feeling loose, you feeling good? I feel better, you know what I mean? Still, the pain's still there. You know, I got sleeves holding, holding myself together. So, you know, I'm a professional, I'm gonna come out here and play. Now, we were talking before the game. This is sort of an iconic thing in the NBA. Everybody talks like this. You told me you invented this sort of NBA covering the mouth, casino style of talking. Is that true? No, it's not true. I, I, you know what I mean? Just people just do it just so, you know, there's a lot of people that read lists and you see people do it nowadays. And, you know, just a lot of people are nosy. You know what I mean? So you just got to try to keep to yourself. All right, well, Mike, have a great game. Stay healthy. Continue doing your thing. Try to get this win. Thank you. Thank you. Fellas. Thanks, Mike. Mike Bibby, yet another teammate of Jimmy Jackson in Sacramento. We come to you from Toronto, the CN Tower, on a Friday evening north of the border. The big three, second half coming up. That is reminder, everybody, all you baseball fans out there, tomorrow, one of the best rivalries in baseball takes place. The first place Cubs take on the Cardinals. Coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1 or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Hello, everybody. What a beautiful night it is here in Toronto. Some great games we've seen so far. Quick reminder for you guys for next week. If you didn't tune into the Facebook game, make sure you do that for the first one, and then we'll be in Boston next week. But we got a great couple games under our belt already. Let's take a look at what happened if you guys didn't get a chance to see those ones. We got the three stars of the night. First star going to Reggie Evans as he keeps his team in prime position. Undefeated, the Ghost Ballers are. He finished the night with 24 points. Just balled out for his team, pun intended on all of that. Then you had Big Baby. How about this guy? Nobody saw this in the scouting report. From deep, three-pointer, not one, but two. He's all smiles on that one, but more importantly, got his team the win as he knocked down 14 points. Somebody's got to get out there on the perimeter and defend him next game. And then you had Andre Emmett. Baron Davis is out of the lineup, so Andre stepped up in his absence. 23 points on the night for him. And more importantly, getting that win for his company over Tri-State. Some great basketball all the way around as we sit at halftime of our fourth and final game. You have the defending chance, you guys. We talked about it. Jimmy outlined. There you go. Take a look one more time quickly at the three stars of the night. But focusing on the game that's happening right now, we're at halftime. And the Ghost Ballers lead this one 25 to 18 over trilogy that the defending champs jimmy outlined for us their their road to getting here they haven't lost a game not one last year went home with the crown and this game tonight they could be on the verge of elimination so uh, we will definitely be playing close attention to all the details here in the second half and to call it let's send it back over to kenny and jim all right thanks very much carissa you're exactly right trilogy at one and four eliminated if they lose this mm -hmm. game for playoff contention Ghost Ballers already eliminated. They haven't won, but pretty good first half. They lead by seven. Well, for Trilogy, it's all about matching the effort and the energy brought to the floor by Ghost Ballers. Again, they have pride. They don't want to go undefeated. I mean, 
not winning a game throughout the whole season. So Trilogy, you have a lot to play for. Your pride, but also defending your crown. And if you don't win games, you're not able to do both. Al Harrington, member of that Trilogy team, the defending champs, and he is with Mike Rappaport. All right, Jersey's in the house. I'm with Al Harrington. You've had a topsy-turvy season. This game is close. What are you, Big Al Harrington from New Jersey, going to do to try to pull this out for Trilogy? Man, I'm going to get buckets, set good screens, and play a little bit of defense. How are you enjoying Toronto? This this city's been under duress the last week. What does it mean to be up here playing this Friday night for the big three? It's good, man. You know, this is always a good city, great basketball town. And uh, I just love playing out here. All right, Al, good out there to try to get this win. Fellas? All right, thanks very much, Mike. Al Harrington, seven points in the first half as we check out the big three standings. Three-headed monsters in power have already clinched spots in the postseason, August 17th in Dallas. Ghost Ballers have been eliminated. Three's company in Tri-State at four and two. 25-18 lead at halftime for Ghost Ballers. Mike Bibby with a big first half for George Gervin's squad. Well, nine points, and it's, it's a difference when you got a shooter, a guy that can create, stretches the defense, highly intelligent, IQ. So when you have a player like that on the court, it gives you another dimension. And I told you, and I talked about this, this team is so talented, and you wonder why they haven't won games. Well, one of the reasons Mike Bibby hasn't been healthy throughout the whole season, but based on that first half, you see what kind of difference he can make when he is healthy. Right, he missed three games, led the league in assists, and four-point field goals last year, hit a four in the first half tonight. He starts the second half with Carlos Boozer. There's Carlos and Ricky Davis. Ghost Ballers looking for their first victory in six games. Al Harrington along with Derek Byers and Rashad McCants for Trilogy. Harrington strong move to the hoop. He draws a foul. All right. Foul committed by Carlos Boozer. They've been going at it all night. Oh, well, they have. But, you know, this goes back to when they're in the league. That long gets each other. It's no different when you're out here. And why not try to exploit the opportunity for Al Harrington to go one-on-one, -on -one, especially when you have open court? He cursed at you. Harrington hits the free throw. He now has nine points. To the trilogy to within five. Trilogy must win to keep their faint playoff hopes alive. Here's Davis, and he was fouled. Derek Byers committing the personal. Good pass, Booth. Good pass, Booth. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. Box out. Hey, yo, get up there. <laughs> Ricky Davis to the free throw line. Played it over 700 NBA games. Trick, trick. With 17. Davis connects. Take him on the two-point free throw now 27 20 Ghost ballers first team to 50 wins the game yeah, Ricky Davis put together a good game himself nine points in the first half And then your shot McCants answers for trilogy while well, the mismatch inside with McCants playing Bibby With Bibby playing McCants he's just able to take advantage of it inside to see if they go back to that on the next offensive possession. Hey, Davis hey, finds Boozer. Hey, Ralph, that's a bump. And the, the foul ball. is called on the Cants. I know, but it's still a foul. Cants won a national championship at North Carolina hey, in 2005. Good move, Rick. Big three championship Slow game MVP no, a yeah, season ago. No, you and Mike. Hey, Ralph, that's not a bump. Talk. Five point lead for the Ghost Ballers, coached by the Iceman, George Gervin. Here's Boozer. He lays it in. Carlos Boozer, how about his resume? NCAA title, Olympic yeah, gold medal, two-time All-Star in the NBA. Not bad. Not bad at all. Switch. Here's Harrington, again matched up with Boozer. Boozer commits the foul. On the floor. Hey. Personal fouls don't matter. Ready, you, you can't foul out. But What's up, baby? Team goes to the penalty on the 15 foul. Yeah, and that's where it comes into play again. Hey, how many understanding time wow. and score is one thing. Understanding too the foul situation, how to get into the penalty early to take advantage of the fact that now you make the free throw when you get to the line that you can retain the ball and have another crack at it from an offensive perspective. 
Five points. Ghost Ballers lead. Can't stop it away from Bibby. Kept alive by Boozer. And again, it's off McCants, although he thought he did not touch it last. No! It was six. Thank you. No foul. Black ball. Six Black seconds. ball. Bo, Bo! So now Bibby will inbound. Six seconds on the shot clock. Oh, I'm shooting. Davis fouled underneath by Byers. I was shooting. He says he was, was shooting. shooting. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the block right here by Rashawn hey, McCants. Hey, they get in that penalty. All right, let's All go. All right, move, but they still gonna put in that penalty. All right, good call. No foul. Good call, let's baby. go. Byers sits strong. down. Where we at? I mean, we uh, got. James White back in the game for Trilogy. Screen set by Boozer hey, on the pick and roll. Harrington can't believe it. He was called for the foul. Well, let's take a look here. Great pocket, well, great pass in between two defenders. It looked pretty clean right there from Al Harrington. Hey, watch what happened when people foul. Here's Boozer to the free throw line. Who you got? 11 points for Carlos Boozer. The Ghost Ballers lead is 7, 31-24. Kenny Albert, Jim Jackson, Mike Rappaport, Carissa Thompson coming to you from oh, Toronto. The cans on the fade, rebounded by Bibby. Ah, I thought so you were going down. between Davis and Boozer. Well, the thought process was there yeah. because it was a mismatch inside with Booth, but the execution right, just wasn't there. As you see, Ricky Davis, he knows Booth is open, but... Um, Guys, right there on the baseline, was able to catch that pass. Here's Harrington spinning on Boozer. Boozer stayed with him. Yeah, great recovery on defense. See if those oh, boys can take advantage of it. He did. Wide open shot for Ricky Davis. Here's White picked up the dribble, shoots. Harrington the rebound and the putback. Play a game warning issued to Harrington. Greg, we need one. We're in the moment. We need one. We're in the moment. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's go. Foul, right? Rick Mahorn's trilogy trailing by five. 31 26. Davis is fouled. White commits the personal. Aaron Byers will check back in for trilogy. Uh, and you know, this trilogy team dealt with something differently this year. Last year, they were able to bully ball a lot of teams bail them out with that, please. Just a and take advantage of it. This year, when things started to go south, Trilogy was on the other end of the stick, and they found themselves complaining a lot more about nine calls and nine fouls, where last year, when things were going right, we didn't, we didn't see it. And we see a little bit of the frustration tonight in this Trilogy team. And at the, you know, a lot of it is pointed at the officials and the coach Rick Horner just like let me handle it you play let me handle getting on the officials the move Mike that was a no foul though, right Mike. now and a penalty no foul six DB. seconds Mike watch the here's Davis with the shot clock winding down Ricky Davis now with 15 yeah, points yeah. leading the way for the ghost ballers we need one go 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 First team to 50 wins the game. He must win by two. James White found the lane. I like that clear out right there. And actually, James White was able to really attack Mike Bibby while Mike was backpedaling. That time, it's really hard to have any lateral movement to stop the drive when you're backpedaling. Bibby back out. Five on the shot clock. This is Davis. Davis puts it out and hits. 17 of the 37. Points for the Ghost Ballers have come from Ricky Davis. James White, nice move to the basket for Trilogy, but they trail by nine thanks to this Ricky Davis basket. So you have your headphones, chair. Back in uh, Toronto, nine point lead for the Ghost Ballers as we chat with their head coach. George Gervin. George, first of all, thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Uh, Ricky Davis leading the way for your squad. Uh, what's impressed you the most with your team so far tonight? Oh, they're moving the ball. They're moving the ball and they're playing together. 
Anytime you move the ball, you get easy shots. So they're playing together and they're playing smart. George, this team has pride. You have a lot of talent. Haven't been able to win, in the game, win a game. What was your message coming into your, to, to this game to your team? I got Bibby back. <laughs> Bibby know how to play basketball. As you can see, he made good decisions. You need a guy that make good decisions, especially down the stretch. So it's good to get him back. What did Rick Bohorn say to you before the game? He told us he had your poster up on his wall as a kid. A lot of, a lot of people have my poster on their wall. <laughs> <laughs> they sure did. And I appreciate it. You're going up against the defending champs, and they've had a bit of a rough time this season, but what would it mean to beat Trilogy? Play smart, Bulls. Coach Gerb, what yep. are you going to do to close out this game? Man, you got to keep playing smart, man. You got to do the things that got us the lead, you know, and that's playing smart, man, not, not fouling and not putting these guys on the line. All right, thanks, Coach. Now Harrington short from three, rebounded by White. And we thank all the coaches that's the who have I know. worn earpieces, chatted with us throughout the games. It's always tough, too, especially yeah, when you're right in the heart it, of it, to really it. give an assessment to talk. But they understand the value of providing that insight, especially in-game insight on what's going on with the team, what's going on with the opponents they're facing. So. That's unprecedented access make these free that we have. Yes. Absolutely. Five of the eight coaches are Hall of Famers. It, the other three had tremendous careers as well. We keep playing. Though. Here's Derek Byers to the line. No on the we ain't worried about that. Yes. I heard the uh, turn the term go, unprecedented go. access get used again. Open, I find open, it interesting. Open. But I will say this, as a basketball fan listening to the broadcast, it sounds crazy, but hearing the dribbles, the squeaks, the grunting, the pushing, the shoving, and the murmuring, I love it. When I used to uh, be a kid and you'd get those NBA TV videos and you hear the guy, it was like magical, you know, growing up. Now we have so much access with social media, but to get this kind of like in-game stuff, I love it so much and it just it's such a like a, a fourth wall to break for the fans I thought the grunting was coming from you Mike. That was me breathing. <laughs> if you hear heavy breathing That's me just walking the sidelines. Hey Mike, let me ask you a question You played hurt today. You yes. came in, but yet you wanted people to feel sympathy for you kind of like LeBron at the end with the press conference You know he walked in yes. with the band enjoying like nobody was looking now you don't have it on I don't have it on but after the game with the post game press conference I will be putting my my, my brace, uh, a.k.a. my soft cast back on the game. But they are referring to this as the Willis-Reed game of broadcasting. Uh, Kenny, you know about the Willis-Reed game. But, but, Mike, who is they? People. Who? Social media, the world. I, I didn't see anything the, come the, across the fans, my feed that, the crowd, that said like, that. People are like, can he, can he pull it out? Will he make it to the end of the game? And the answer is yes. You'll have to drag me off this court. May 8th, 1970, the Willis-Reed game. And now, July 27th, 2018, the Mike Rappaport game. Yeah, will live in infamy, go down in history. With but, Mike, I did not notice the cast on the flight up here yesterday. Well, I had an incident, okay? And by the way, uh, Kenny, I lost my pants. Did you see when we were at TSA and they unpacked my stuff? The guy stole my jeans. So yesterday I was walking around in shorts and I had to spend a few hundred bucks getting me some some jeans today so I could look TV presentable. I was looking to see if maybe you could reimburse me with that. I did happen to see those jeans for sale on eBay. So weird. Just before the shot clock expires, Carlos Bruiser pulls the ghost ballers to within four points of victory. And the toughest thing to do, ghost ball, is you haven't won a game. These next four points to close it out. I mean, you basically put Trilogy out of playoff contention. They're not going to go away. These are going to be four, four of the hardest points they have to score in order to close this game out. Screen set by Boozer. Here's Boozer. He puts it up, and he nails it. 
So the Ghost Ballers now two points away from their first victory of the season. Fires, four point shot, Bibby the rebound. Got a mismatch inside. Take it down. Here's Bibby. The Ghost Ballers win with eliminate trilogy for postseason contention. Here's Bruiser on the stage. No good. White. It's good and the foul. Yeah, at that time, George Irvin, the whole bench for ghost ballers, ghost ballers were like, let them go, don't foul. Because even if they score, we get the ball back. You don't want to put them to the free throw line, give them a chance to score, and get the possession back. White to the line. He led the big three in free throw percentage last season. Nails that one. So it's now a 48-41 game, and they maintain possession because it is a good game for the Ghost Ballers. Here is Boozer. No good. Did not touch the rim. Battle for the basketball. And a timeout will be taken by Ghost Ballers. Well, you said those last points were not going to be easy, Jim. Well, you, but here's the thing, too, because it's been a struggle all year to finish games and to get that done. You press a little bit more. But what's been working for those ballers is ball movement, make the defense, have to close out, and then you attack them off the dribble. Or it's a quick pick and roll with Mike Bibby and Carlos Boozer to exploit a two-man game. That's what has gotten you to this point where you're two points away from winning a game. And even at the end, you don't want to go away from that. That's been successful for you. Go back to the well once more to see if you can close this out. Trilogy, the defending champs, unbeaten a season ago, will be eliminated from playoff contention here in 2018 with a loss. Let's go. Ghost ballers three, baby. Let's go. have already been eliminated, but pride on the line looking for their first victory. They need only two points. Carlos Bruiser, Mike Bibby, Ricky Davis on the floor for Ghost Ballers. Let's see what play Coach Gervin drew up out of it. In the timeout, I saw Mike Bibby had the clipboard as well, so he may have had some input on what they want to run. Here's Bibby for the win. Air ball. It's Deion Glover with it now for Trilogy. That bell out shot right there. Hey, hey, hey. Still had seven seconds on the shot clock. White short, rebounded by Boozer. Red, red. Boozer spinning inside on White. Good pressure from Myers. Glover lost the handle. Black ball. Boozer. Black ball. Boozer. Hey. Ghost Ballers done. basketball. They need two points to win the game. Hey, boo. Make it easy. Make it easy. Review. Does not want to use a timeout. Well, yeah, he didn't, well, he didn't want to use the review to see if the ball actually went out on Trilogy on his team. So, ball is still in the hand of Ghost Balls to see. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Now they're in the penalty, but that's the. That's the. One foul you get in the bonus right. to take the ball out on the side. The now the next foul reverts back to Ghost Ball is going hey, to the free throw right. line. When it becomes well, point game, though, the opposing team has a foul to get. Yeah, no matter man. how many fouls they've committed Both to the half. Yep, and keep in mind, point game. Beautiful play. Ricky Davis with the exclamation point on the first victory of the season for Ghost Ballers. Uh, they deserved it. They came out and played early on Ghost Ballers. Team basketball, they played defense. Having Mike Bibby back in the fold, as Coach Gervin said, adds a different component of toughness, of intelligence, and also scoring. And I told you it was going to be a tough, tough four points. It was, but a beautiful out-of-bounds play from Mike Bibby.
to a cutting oh, Ricky right, Davis. Right, right, right. with a sixth assist. 23 points, game high, Ricky Davis. And I don't know if Derek Byers right here was expecting Deion Glover to switch, but you don't want to allow him to go to the basket. You want to force him to catch the ball back out towards half court. So James White not really applying a lot of pressure on the ball, allowed the pass just to be zipped in there. So a couple of defensive breakdowns by Trilogy at the end of the game. The Ghost Ballers with the victory, 15 to 41, their first win of the season. Ricky Davis led the way, 23 points. He is with Mike. All right, I'm with two of the stars of the game, Ricky Davis and Carlos Boozer. First, Ricky, you put up a lot of points. It's your first win. How did it feel to get that big three monkey off your back? Man, it felt great, man. Finally get a win, you know, with the way we played last year, you know. We just got to get it back going. Keep fighting. You're still in the hunt. Boozer, this is your first year in the big three. You guys have been struggling, coming up short. You seem to play your best game today. What did it mean to get this win versus these guys? Especially, these are like the bad guys. These are the antagonists of the big three league. Yeah, now like Rick said, man, we've been grinding. We felt that we fell short most of the season. For us to get a win right now is a big deal. We played together, we had continuity. Everybody was involved. We played great defense, held on a one shot. Obviously, they're the defending champs, so we got up for that game as well. But I just liked how we played as a team tonight. Now, this is your first season, Booz. What's the biggest surprise? What was the biggest adjustment in a basketball way uh, that you feel figured out for the big three this season? Yeah, it's more physical, which I love. Like, when I first got in the NBA, I'm playing against Shaq and Carl Malone and Alonzo Mourning, like real OGs in the game, Charles Oakley. Then, as, then I got done playing in my career as I evolved. The game changed. It became softer in the NBA. This is physical like the NBA used to be. So the physicality was the biggest adjustment. That hand checking, that's a real thing, right? Yeah. That, that being able to hand check or not being able yeah, to hand check. I mean, that's real men. When you play, you play on the court, you know you're from New York. When you play on the court, ain't no foul. You play through that. Unless you got blood, ain't no foul. All right, now your coach, George, the Iceman yeah. Gervin, you guys have been struggling. Yeah. What does he mean to be, what does it mean to you to be coached by the Iceman? Man, it's an honor, man. I'm, I'm, I'm such a, a student of the game, and I, I followed his career when I, you know, my dad started showing me films of him. He's one of the best scorers ever seen in the NBA. So to be coached by him, to be in his presence, to get his basketball IQ, his knowledge, uh, it's invaluable. I don't, I don't know the words for it because you're, I'm really speaking to a legend every weekend and, and learning what he knows from the game. So huge honor for me. All right, well, congratulations on the win. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can keep things going. You never know. Hey, we'll hit a streak right now, baby. Back. Thanks, Rap. Absolutely. Appreciate you, baby. Fellas, I want to say this. On behalf of the big three, on behalf of you guys, it was an honor to be up here this week. Toronto was under duress. Toronto strong. It was an honor and a privilege to, to do this broadcast up here in Toronto. And it was a great game, great night here in Toronto, fellas. Well, it certainly was. Thanks, Mike, for all your hard work tonight. Big matchup next week in Boston. Three-headed monsters and power head-to-head. 6-0, 5-1. They both clinched playoff berths. Three's company, Tri-State in the driver's seat for Berths as well. Killer three is still alive. Bottom three teams have been eliminated from postseason contention. Ball hogs, Ghost Ballers, and Trilogy. But George Gervin's Ghost Ballers do pick up their first victory of the season tonight here in Toronto. Much more to come. Carissa Thompson, when we return, it's the big three on FS1.